Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ehad. Vahata et Eloheka, Bakol Vavka, Uvakol Nakshaka, Uvakol Meodeka. Hear this, Israel. Our God is one God. And you will love your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your greatness. Amen. It is really good to be back here. Okay, the commute was not great, but I love being back here. I love being in the mix of you good people here at St. James. I've, uh, I've been busy in a good way, um, but busy. And so on my drive here, I had prepared a sermon thinking about the Old Testament. Because, you know, the Old Testament, I love to preach it. But on the way here, I realized I'd been thinking a lot about laws in my world, in my life, outside of seminary, within seminary, on the street, and here even in church. I'd been thinking a lot about laws. And as I reflected on the drive here, I realized I have to preach about laws. So here I am. I realized that in my seminary life, I'm preparing to write a, a, a thesis. And you know, a thesis is all about the right rules. The light, right structure and the right arguments and making sure that your academic voice is appropriate and there's lots of laws. And in the order that I belong to, I've been thinking a lot about our Constitution. We've been rewriting things, and so I've been thinking about what our piety is and what our laws around our piety is and what that means. It's all about laws. And so some of you know this, maybe not all of you, but the reason that I'm not here with St. James this year is because I'm serving as a chaplain with the Alexandria Police Department. So I talk a lot about laws. I find myself riding around in cop cars at 2 o'clock in the morning and having a conversation about why did you pull that person over? Or why is it that you are enforcing this law, not this law? And it's interesting because inevitably, all of the officers have pretty much told me the right, same thing. You cannot get on the street without breaking a law. You just can't do it. Whether you inadvertently make that right turn without using your blinker, or maybe you do a rolling stop, you're gonna break a law, right? We all know that's true. So usually the officers are looking for something more than just that little law break to decide who they're going to pull over. But it's frustrating, right? How do I not break all the laws? Well. In our scripture today, that's exactly what the Pharisees were faced with. They had a list of a lot of laws. We'll just say that. There were a lot of rules, and there were a lot of ways that things had to be done. And so when they were challenging Jesus as the rabbi and said, Rabbi, so what's the greatest law? They're thinking they're going to trip him up, right? Well, Jesus' response was kind of a scoff at their laws. He said, you will love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your greatness from Deuteronomy 5, 6, I think, and Leviticus. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. And on those two things, you are going to hang all of the laws. You see, folks, we, as people, as humans, as finite entities in this creation, we feel like we need to have boundaries in order to know what we're supposed to do next. We have to have boundaries. But God is boundless. So there are three men. They're climbing a mountain. They all come at it from different directions. The first man, he starts that climb, and it's rocky. 
The side that he picked, it's really rocky. There's big boulders, little rocks. There's lots of gravel. He's slipping and he's falling and he's cutting his knuckles and he's hitting his head. He's, it's a tough climb, but he makes it to the top. The other man, he chooses another side of that mountain that is cold. And so as he's climbing, it gets colder and colder. And next thing you know, he's up to his hip in snow. But he makes it to the top. The third man, inadvertently, unbeknownst to him, he chooses the gentle slope. And so his way to the top of the hill is gentle. He just has to walk and enjoy and see the nature around him. It's a beautiful walk. Each one of those men climbed the same mountain. And they got to the same top. But it was a different experience for each of them. So let's look at what it must have been like to have been a Jew in the time of Jesus. Those laws were probably there for a reason. A reason that maybe we know today, maybe some of them we've lost, but they were there for a reason. Maybe it was to perpetuate a bloodline. Maybe it was in order to just stay healthy. When we talk about the, the um, keeping kosher and stuff like that, it was about practical reasons in no small part. But the Pharisees lost sight of that. The Pharisees got to the point where if you ate an unclean thing, it was a sin. They lost sight of the reason for these laws. And so when Jesus comes in and says, hey, y'all, the real important stuff is to love God and to love each other, this was really radical. This is something that busted open all of the laws and, the, and it was a danger to the current structure of government. So let's go back to those three men climbing the hill. If those three men were to come to you today and say, okay, here's the rules for climbing this mountain. That first guy, he's going to say, okay, it's a rule. You have to wear shin guards, you have to wear a helmet, and you probably should bring a first aid kit, right? That's the rules, right? The second guy, he's going to say, okay, it's a rule. You have to wear warm clothes, right? And you have to be prepared. With big hats and big gloves, you have to be prepared. And the third guy, he's going to say, you're fine. Just start climbing. You'll be all right. So why the difference, right? It's because of context. But Jesus told us here, and this, in my opinion, is at the heart of all things that Christ taught. Love your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your greatness, and treat your neighbor as yourself, and the rest of it will fall into place. Amen.